Hey, how's it going guys? It's the Merg. Today we're going to discuss the structure of the cell, namely the cytoskeleton. We'll turn on to how the cell moves itself across the body and how it moves substances around inside the body. Then we'll end the lesson with ways the cell attaches to one another. Let's begin. The cytoskeleton is an ultra tiny network of protein fibers, filaments, and microtubules. They're sewn together to help the cell maintain its shape. Microtubules are these cylindrical shaped structures made up of rows upon rows of protein called tubulin. These microtubules are constructed by something called the centrosome. Now the centrosome is actually an organelle and it plays a pretty big role in cell division, but we'll talk more about centrosomes later in another video. Microtubules not only help the cell shape, but also guides organelle movement across the cell. You also have something called actin filaments. These are simply made with a protein called actin. They're even thinner than microtubules and form long fibers that are longer than microtubules. They usually occur in bundles and they also help with the movement of structures inside the cell. Another abundant structure in the cytoskeleton is the intermediate filaments. They play a similar role as the other two mentioned as well. With that out of the way, let's talk about movement. Cells as a whole are sometimes equipped with tail-like structures that help with movement. Cilia and flagella are among the most talked about tails. Both are covered by a layer we call the shaft, which consists of microtubules equipped with molecules that perceive and use ATP to physically move the tail. Cilia can be found in the lining of our respiratory tract. In this case, cilia is used to push debris up and out of the throat and lungs. These cilia are attached to the lining of certain systems. Cilia isn't only for moving objects. Some single-celled organisms like protozoa are covered with cilia and it helps them move across their environment. They also move eggs along the uterine tube to prepare for fertilization. Flagella, however, can be found on sperm cells allowing sperm to move into the egg during fertilization. In an interesting genetic disorder known as ciliary dyskinesia, meaning abnormal movement of the cilium can have pretty obvious effects. This disorder is when the production of proteins found in these tails fail to form properly. Those people end up with constant respiratory diseases and difficulty in conception. The cellular matrix is a three-dimensional network of macromolecules consisting of collagen, proteoglycan, and glycoaminoglycans. They also have elastin, fibronectin, laminins, and a bunch of other glycoproteins. Overall, the extracellular matrix helps the cells bind together and regulate cellular functions such as adhesion, migration, proliferation, and differentiation. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the extracellular matrix and it functions in the resistance of stretching. On the other hand, elastin provides the elasticity to tissues allowing them to stretch and return to its original shape afterwards. Fibronectin plays as the glue that binds to an integral or transmembrane protein called integrin. It is located on the cell membrane. It keeps together the extracellular matrix and the cytoskeleton for specialized cell signaling. With this close relationship between the extracellular matrix and the cytoskeleton, it allows for some structure, shape, and function influence. There's also such a thing called proteoglycans that are made up of amino sugars or polysaccharides and carbohydrate polymers. They're what we call glycoaminoglycans, which are attached to proteins. Proteoglycans have a net negative charge that attracts positively charged sodium ions. This in turn helps attract water molecules via osmosis. They also help with the storage of molecules such as growth factors which are capable of stimulating cell growth. There are a variety of different proteoglycans that we'll talk about later on in the course. Now let's move on to cell junctions. What do we mean by cell junctions? Well, cell junctions allow coordination and communication between cells. What happens here is that there are adjacent cells being attached to one another. There are overall three main types of junctions that connect one cell tissue to another. 
Adhesion junctions are one, and it basically does just that. It connects one cell to another adjacent cell. Here, the cytoskeletons between the two cells are actually connected. Another junction is what we call a tight junction. In tight junctions, it's the proteins embedded in the membrane that form the junction. There are so many junctions here that they produce an almost zipper-like pattern. Adhesion junction and tight junctions can be found mainly in digestive and kidney systems. They provide extra container-like properties and make great water barriers. Finally, gap junctions are protein channels from one cell that fuse to another protein channel of another. There's a gap, a channel, or an opening, if you may, between these two cells, allowing easy movement of substances between adjacent cells. Well, that's it for today. If you like my videos, please like, subscribe, and share. Bye.